Hi guys. So, I've had a really stressful few days, but everything's fine. The ring is finally in my hands, and I am going to ship it out to one of my clients who is also a viewer. I just sent them photos of the ring. Let me show you. Can you see it? It is the most delicate, feminine little thing. It's so beautiful. This is a two carat diamond set in this really delicate tulip setting style with a three fourths pave. And did I say it was platinum? Anyways. So what I've been doing is taking product photos of the ring so that I can show them and also post it on my page. And what a coincidence, I bought tulips this morning. So I've been using tulips to take photos of this ring because it's like a tulip setting ring and tulips, it's a good theme, right? So that's what I'm doing now. I really have a newfound respect for, I need a new tripod, This the camera is too heavy for my tripod so it doesn't stabilize. I have a new respect for product photographers and macro photographers because you don't know how difficult it is to take fo fo product photography until you're the one having to do it. And I have no background in photography, like I've always liked taking photos and I've always had an interest in cameras but I don't have a proper setup like if you guys saw what kind of weird box this this is an Ikea shelf and I'm basically using it as a light box because I don't have any I don't have like a studio space or anything for photos and it's been working really well actually because I have a really good camera and lens so you can't even really see anything except for the product I'm trying to shoot. But yeah, it's been um, a new challenge that I've been really enjoying. I, I've been loving taking these photos. Um, it is difficult, yeah, because what I'm working with is like very tiny objects that need to be taken up really close. But then comes the challenge of this huge lens is so good that it shows like microscopic dust and water droplets and then you just kind of have to learn how to take the jewelry in a flattering way because there are like tiny tiny dust particles on the surface of stones that you don't see with the naked eye but will show up on this camera so that's been a challenge and my biggest fear is dropping an item that I'm trying to film. I haven't done it yet, but it is a fear of mine. But oh, <laughs> it's following my face. I can't do it. Okay. But yeah, it's amazing. I have no complaints about this beautiful ring. So I'm going to take a break a little bit and then I'll start filming again and I think I told you guys but I'm going to Japan again it's a redo trip because I massively got sick on my first trip and couldn't enjoy it oh I love tulips so I wanted to gift myself a redo and that's what I'm doing so yeah I'm gonna vlog this time around I couldn't really vlog last time because I was with my partner and we didn't do anything interesting but this time i'll be there for two weeks and i'm gonna be like just vlogging my daily life i think because i got this new camera too i want to use it okay so i'm going to eat my lunch now it's 12. it's really rare that i actually eat lunch at 12 because my eating schedule is like all over the place so what i'm gonna be eating is uh udon 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 in japanese udon in english pronunciation i guess i don't know how they pronounce it but with a steamed, like, dropped egg and Chinese cabbage, uh, haksai. And I'm gonna top it with my favorite favorite. This is um, salmon flakes in a jar. 
and it's like salted salmon flakes cooked ones so it lasts pretty long and I always buy a bunch of jars before I come back from Japan you know what after being with um, a non-asian man I've become so self-conscious of the way I eat noodles and stuff because he was raised to not make a single noise eating I'm so self-conscious of eating when I'm around him or his family I go ham on this flakes because I love it so much but yeah so It's very hot. It's so delicious. I love Hakusai with this Chinese cabbage. One more joining me. This is Japanese Mugicha. It's barley tea and we drink it cold for, I don't know, like everything i don't drink water i only drink barley tea i think it's really normal for a lot of japanese people it's not caffeinated and it's um not sweetened it's just barley water so yeah it's my favorite drink to have Okay, so what I want to talk about today is I just want to show you guys like how I keep my jewelry looking really nice and shiny. Uh, I've always received a few comments every time I show my love bracelet on how it's so shiny after having it for 3-4 years. And what I'm about to show you is how I keep it so shiny. Uh, you do need a few things and they're not necessarily brand specific but I do have one thing that is kind of non-negotiable in terms of where you buy it from but it's really really cheap so don't worry about that this is a disclaimer what I'm going to say is that the way I show you how I clean my jewelry is only for unplated white gold which is very rare if you buy white gold jewelry from traditional retailers or even luxury retailers like Cartier, Tiffany, all of their white gold is rhodium plated. The exception is if you buy any kind of jewelry from Cartier with no diamonds, then their white gold is actually not rhodium plated, which means you can treat that white gold the same as the rose and yellow gold. But if your love bracelet or Justin Clue or any of your Cartier jewelry in white gold has diamonds, then their white gold is rhodium plated. So don't do any of the things that I'm going to be telling you about. There is a way around this, which I will show you in a second, but I just want to put that disclaimer there. Don't ever use a traditional gold polishing cloth on your white gold jewelry if it is rhodium plated. If you don't know if it's rhodium plated or not, you can assume that it is because um, it's just kind of like an industry standard that white gold is rhodium plated. You need boiled water. And obviously you need a bowl to put that boiled water in so here it is and you want a little toothbrush mine is just from Cartier they usually give it to you when you buy something they'll have like a little cleaning kit and you're gonna want some dish soap and yeah so first we're going to just pour some 
boiling hot water in the bowl. You can see it's steaming. It's very hot. And I'm just pour like just some dish soap. Doesn't really matter how much. And you can mix it up a bit and just leave it because we're not going to even touch it right now. So after you do that, I like to use gloves because I don't like to always have to wash my hands after. When you use a gold polishing cloth, very often you're going to notice a black residue on the cloth and also on your fingers. And what that black residue is, is it's a chemical reaction between your jewelry and the cleaning agent that's impregnated into your cleaning cloth. So if you don't want to deal with that, you can just put on a pair of silicone gloves. So this is my non-negotiable. And I know it looks dirty, but it's not. It's just the reaction between the metal and the cleaning cloth. This is a cleaning cloth specifically from Muji, M-U-J-I. It's a Japanese retailer, but they have stores all around the world now. And I believe they call it their jewelry cleaning cloth. And it's the same as, you know, other gold polishing cloths that you can look up on Amazon or buy in um, a jeweler's. And I feel that it does the best job in polishing. So basically, you're just going to take whatever you want to polish. This is like really self-explanatory. This is the Ripple Etoile Band that I designed and a few of you have actually purchased from me. So I wear this every day. It's my favorite band. I basically wear it more often than my wedding band now. And you're just going to do, I know the sound is annoying, but you're just going to basically start to polish it like this. So just do it until you feel like it's gotten shinier. And you can see the area that I worked on here got a lot more dark because that's like the chemicals in the cloth reacting with the metal. So you're just going to keep going. And if you have um, jewelry, for example, like Mother of Pearl from your Van Cleef Alhambra necklace, try not to polish the actual stone unless it's a diamond because it will scratch your softer stones like Mother of Pearl and Pearl. So once you're satisfied with that, you're going to just drop it into that solution that we made. And you're going to do that with all the rings that you want to polish. So for example, I guess I will also polish my Bulgari Serpenti ring. This is such a beautiful ring. I really love it. So here's another one. This is a Eternity Band that I designed originally because of a client who ordered it, but I wanted to also have a reference piece for myself and I've really been enjoying wearing it actually. In the case of diamonds, you don't have to worry about scratching the diamonds because diamonds are very strong, but you just want to mostly concentrate on polishing the actual gold. This is a 1.1 karat diamond engagement ring that I designed for myself. It's one of the first things I worked on with my goldsmith. This is my champagne asher cut ring that I made for my 28th birthday. It's my ultimate favorite ring. It's been really hard to find the same tone champagne in diamonds, actually. I've had a lot of requests to make this ring, but I haven't been able to source the exact kind of same tone of champagne. So yeah. Now I have a few rings in here, you can see. And what you're going to do, so once you polish all the things you want to polish, you're just going to start to scrub with the dish soap solution and the hot water. Be careful not to burn yourself, but basically you're going to try to get under the ring as well if you have stones to clean the underside where the diamonds are set. And that's a lot of my rings actually do have diamonds, so I do concentrate on scrubbing the diamonds because diamonds can get so grubby so easily. If you use hand cream, if you wash your hands, if you wipe your hands with a towel, the fibers can get stuck in between the prongs too. It's really easy to make a diamond look very cloudy very quickly. And the reason why I don't recommend ultrasonic cleaners personally is because there are certain stones that can't handle being in an ultrasonic cleaner. For example, emeralds. I don't have an example to show you, but first of all, because there's a chance that your ultrasonic cleaner is going to loosen the setting of the stones. 
and over time you're going to actually lose the stones and well hopefully you'll see when it falls out of your ring or your necklace or whatever but a lot of the time you don't even notice until it's too late and that's really horrible and that's because the ultrasonic cleaner is um, vibrating obviously so it's really easy to loosen settings that way and like I said emeralds are actually treated with oil a lot of the time it's um, normal and this oil will kind of dissipate when you're cleaning with an ultrasonic cleaner and you're gonna lose the sheen of the stone and also potentially damage it if the emerald is oil filled and now I want to talk about how you can polish your rhodium plated white gold so if you Google on Amazon or whatever website you use a uh, gold polishing cloth for rhodium plated jewelry, you should be able to find a specific gold polishing cloth. This is just the one I have. Um, it's from a German company, but it's a specific gold polishing cloth that's not as abrasive and it's not going to rub off the rhodium plating. So if I ever want to polish my white gold jewelry, for example, this is my Tiffany tea ring, the infamous super overpriced ring which i think retails almost for eight thousand euros now if i ever want to polish that i would only ever use um, the rhodium plating specific gold polishing cloth so really make sure that you don't polish any of your white gold jewelry um, unless you know if it's not rhodium plated so once you basically cleaned everything you want to clean you're going to just let it soak in the hot water and then you're going to replace the soapy water with normal cold water and rinse it so there's no more soap residue. So if you can't be bothered to boil water and put dish soap in a bowl and do the cleaning, there are products and I really recommend this one. This is the Connoisseurs brand um, jewelry bath and basically what it is is it's already a pre-made solution. and there's a little basket inside like that. You're gonna place your jewelry in the basket and then dip it and then use the toothbrush that comes with the jar and scrub it, it's the exact same thing. It does work really well. I just find it a lot easier and more satisfying to use hot water and dish soap. And if you cannot access the Muji Gold Polishing Cloth, this is also a pretty good brand. This is Haggerty's brand, and these are not gold polishing cloths, actually. This is the fine stones cloth, so you can actually polish your mother of pearl and pearl jewelry with this. And jewel cloth is like for platinum, diamond, sapphire, rubies. Or you can stick with connoisseurs. This is like a travel size um, polishing cloth, so it's all one-time use, but it does work really well. And you just take it with you when you're traveling, and you notice your jewelry is dirty. You can clean it with this so I'm going to go rinse all the jewelry and I'll come back and I'll show you how shiny it is okay so I just finished rinsing the jewelry and now I've gotten all the soap residue off I'm going to just dry it with the microfiber cloth this ring I wear a lot like I would say at one point I was wearing it every day and it just looks brand new it's to the point where I can still use jewelry that I wear daily for product photography for my brand and you can't see any scratches in the photos which is really amazing actually because my camera picks up like everything like tiny pieces of dust and here's the platinum ring like I said this is one carat and it's like a perfect diamond too my Coco Crush. You know what's so funny is that um, I had two orders in one day from different people, obviously, um, for this Ripple Etoile band, which is my favorite band, like I said, that I've made so far. It's so cute, isn't it? It's got these like scattered diamonds, so it looks like stars. Anyways, what I was saying is the two people who ordered the Ripple Etoile band specifically asked me for photos of me wearing the band that I designed with the Coco Crush because they want to stack it like that. So I'm going to be matching with them soon and I'm so happy about that. And also, it just looks so nice together. Isn't that so pretty? 
I'm so proud of myself for this ring design. I think it's my favorite. Okay, anyways. And here's the Eternity Band that I ordered um, one extra when a client bought it from me because I wanted a reference and I've never really worn or even been interested in Eternity Bands until she ordered it. But this ring is so pretty. This one is 3.2 uh, millimeter stones, but I think it's a really nice ring finger ring. Got mine in rose gold, but the other two orders for it have been in white gold. So that's basically it. That's what I do also with my love bracelet to keep it looking really shiny and basically looking new at this point, which is crazy. I know it involves being a bit insane, and I do recognize that people don't have time to polish their jewelry all the time. It's just, I've always, always loved jewelry, like since I was a little girl. I would dream about this ring that my grandma gave me when I was like six years old, and I was so happy when she let me choose it from her ring box. That's how I keep my jewelry looking really clean. Um, and one more thing before I go. Um, my previous video, I'm still hosting that giveaway for the jade necklace. I showed you in the other video, but in case you didn't see that video, here it is. It's 14 carats solid gold with a jade bar in a bezel setting. So if you flip it, it's just solid gold and it's so pretty. This giveaway ends on March 15th. So if you want to enter, all you have to do is go to my previous video. It says, um, giveaway obviously leave a comment and also make sure you follow my two instagram accounts one for my jewelry studio leva and the second one is just um like my other instagram my normal instagram where i post like luxury stuff so yeah that's all if you want to join that don't forget all you have to do is comment and follow two instagram accounts so you basically don't even have to be subscribed to me um so yeah, that's all. Thank you guys so much for watching. My next video will be a travel vlog of me going back to Japan uh, to do my redo trip. I'm going to be going back home for two weeks and it's going to be cherry blossom season, I think. So I'm so, so excited about that. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.